Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to get started actually resolving our circle collisions. In the previous video we got to the point where we now have a physics loop. So let's bring that up down here in our update function. Here's our physics loop. We are detecting collisions but we're not resolving them quite yet. Before we start resolving collisions, there's one thing I'd like to get going. Here we're displaying these collision circles all the time. I want to have the ability to turn those collision circles on and off. So let's go ahead and make a key that will give us a toggle. And the first thing we need to do is make a field in our game class display collision circles. And I'm just going to set that to false for now. Inside our entity class where we actually display this, we're going to pass in a field that's going to tell the function whether we want to display the collision circles or not. And then all we're going to do is check to see if we want to display the collision circles. And I believe the main ship actually overrides that as well, so we need to pass that in. And then we'll just pass it through to the base class. Okay, and then so this needs to be a boolean value as well here. Inside the entity class, I'm going to make this have a default value of false. So if we don't write anything in there, it just won't display them. Inside our game class, we have the draw function. Here's where we're drawing all of the entities. I'm just going to add the display collision circles boolean value and that allows us to toggle that and then inside of our update function here I'm going to add another keyboard um, click value and if we press the B key I want to toggle whether we are displaying the circles so we'll just set whatever the display circles is to the opposite and then we can run this and just check to make sure that works and it does not so oh we need to okay, so let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like so it looks like we have collision circles off by default. If I press B, they are turning back on, and I can turn them off and on. That looks really good. Uh, the only other thing I want to do is I just want to make sure that uh, collision circles are actually displayed true by default. So I'm just going to scroll on down here to the update function, and here is our physics loop. If we want to be able to now react to collisions, if we want to be able to have an accurate collision response system, we need to be able to get a few more values from this intersect circles function. I'm going to go back into the collision class, and I'm going to make a new function for intersect circles, and I'm just going to copy this part to get started. We need to pass out a little bit more information. Let's just draw two circles that are colliding here and here. Here are their centers. What we need to do now is determine what direction will give us the shortest distance to move one circle out of the other. And then what is that distance to move out of the collision? Well, the direction that we want to go is called the collision normal. I'm going to call this one A and this one circle B. And to get the normal or the direction, all we have to do is subtract the center of A, the center of B, and that will give us a vector that points from A to B. And then in order to turn that into a direction vector, all we have to do is normalize the vector, which will give it a magnitude of 1 or a length of 1. Because initially, if we do b minus a, the length is going to be the distance from the center of a to the center of b. And so if we normalize this, then we'll get a vector that has a magnitude of 1 or a length of 1, which will then allow us to use it for direction. And then the other thing we need to do is find out what this distance is. How far in that direction do we need to move to be out of the collision with the other circle? Let's start off by first just detecting the collision. So back in our code, and instead of doing this distance squared value here, I'm actually going to calculate a vector pointing from the center of A to the center of B, and I'm going to call that uh, vector N, and it'll be B center minus A center. Right now, it's just a vector pointing from A to B, and the magnitude or the length of the vector is whatever the distance is between A and B. So we can use that to determine if we have intersection. And we're going to do it the same way we did up here. So I'm going to copy all of this code and put it in right here. Our distance squared now, instead of being this, is now just going to be the length of N, but actually the length squared, because we're trying to avoid that square root at the very beginning. And so now everything else should be the same, and I'm just going to abbreviate these squared values like this and do the same thing up here for these ones. We actually want to send out a little bit more information. If there's not an intersection, then all we're going to do is come to this. We're just going to return false here. Otherwise, we have a little bit more work to do. And the work we need to do is find out the depth of the intersection, or how much overlap do we have. And then we also need to pass out the normal of the intersection. And we need to give it some default values here. So we'll just tell it the depth by default is 0, and the normal will be a vector that is 0. 
All right, so if we've gotten to this point, we actually now need to determine the exact distance between these two centers. We have the distance squared, but that's not going to work for our new calculations. We actually need the real distance. So let's make a distance value, and we're just going to take the square root of the distance squared. And we can use that distance now to determine what our depth is, or how far do we need to move to be out of intersection. Back in here, we know the length from here to here now, or we know the distance between the centers, and we also know the distance that is the radii. So if we add the radii together, which I called R2, and then we subtract out the actual distance between the centers, then we get the depth value. Or that's this little piece right here, how far do we need to move to be out of intersection. We are now just going to set the depth we added the radii together up here already, so we'll just bring that down and we're going to use R2. And then we need to subtract out whatever the actual distance is between the centers. And so now we have the depth or the amount of space we need to move to be out of collision. Now let's figure out what this normal value is. The normal is just going to be a vector pointing from the center of A to the center of B, but it's going to be normalized so it has a length of 1. So we can set the normal equal to n, but in order to normalize it, we need to divide by the distance or the magnitude of this. And the magnitude we've already figured out here, and that's the distance. If we divide by the distance, then we have the magnitude. Now, under most circumstances, this will work just fine. There is one more thing we need to plan for. If the circles are sitting directly on top of each other, meaning their centers are in the exact same place, then we need to handle that as well. And the way I'm going to handle that is just by pushing the circles out in a random direction. The depth will just be the radius of one circle plus the radius of the other circle. So it's the uh, two radii added together. In order to push it all the way out, we need the first radius, and then we need the second radius as well. Let's go ahead and make an if statement here. So if the distance is not zero, this will be the normal case. This is what happens most of the time. On the edge cases where possibly they're sitting right on top of each other. The depth is just going to be R2, or the radii added together. The normal is just going to be a random uh, directional vector, but it should be the same every time. So I'm just going to make a new vector that is 1 on the x and 0 on the y. This is kind of an edge case. You shouldn't see this happen hardly at all, and maybe even never, but we want to make sure it's handled just in case. And actually I have an error here, so let's see. I think I might be missing a... There we go. And then, uh, oh, I renamed this one, but I forgot to rename this one. So, all right. So that looks like everything we need. We know the direction we need to resolve the collision, and we also know the depth or the distance we need to resolve the collision. Back in our game class, we are now in our physics loop. We're going to get these values from our intersect circles. So we're going to pass out the depth, and let's pass out the normal, which is a vector 2. And all we're going to do now is just push the objects apart. So if they're intersecting, just push them apart. We're not going to actually model correct physics right now. We're just going to push them apart and make sure that nobody's intersecting. The way that looks is I want to create a vector that I call an MTV, and that's the minimum translation vector. The MTV is just the combination of this normal and depth value that'll tell us not only which direction, but how far, all in one vector to resolve the collision. So all we have to do is take the depth and multiply that by the normal, and then we'll get the MTV. And then we just need to actually move the entities. And I think inside the entity class, I need to create a function for moving or adjusting the position. So I'm going to make a function called move. Um, it's going to take a vector 2, and it'll pass in an amount. All we're going to do is take the position, and we're going to increment the position by this amount. And then back in the game class, we're going to tell A that we want to move by the MTV, and B that we want to move by the MTV. Okay, so now this is mostly correct, but we have to make some adjustments. Uh, first of all, the MTV tells us how far and what direction do we need to move B to be out of a collision with A. And so we actually want each entity to take half of that amount. We're going to divide this MTV in two. So A will take half of the amount they need to move, and B will take the other half, and they'll just move apart. Now the other thing is, we need to reverse the sign on A. The MTV tells us how far do we need to move B to be out of collision. But if we want to move A out of collision, we need to reverse the sign so it goes the opposite direction. Now that we have this, once we've detected the intersection of the circles, it should 
pry the objects apart before it actually displays them. What we should see is as the circles intersect, they'll hit each other and then kind of slide around each other and then move on to where they were going before the collision. So let's go ahead and run that and just see what happens. All right, now I think that looks right. I'm seeing all the intersections look like they're happening correctly. Uh, let's go ahead and move our ship a little bit and see if we can intersect. They hit and they slide off, and once they're clear, then they start moving off in the other direction. So obviously not physically correct, but the code is working like we want it to. And now that we have this, we can move on to more complicated or more accurate resolution of, of these circle collisions.